NFTs. What are they? What do they do? Why did I have to add a clause about them to my commission terms? Can I eat them? Well, today on Quoth the Raven, I'm here to figure it all out for you, my precious hatchlings. Also, sorry I've been away for so long, I've been procrastinating a lot, but if you want to see more of me, you can find me on Twitch, I do art streams, and it's super fun and chill, so come and say hi. Okay, back to the video. I want to begin this video with a short explanation of what an NFT is, and then discuss what makes them good, what makes them bad, and what makes them terrible. Because, as a semi-professional artist, historian, whatever, I find them very fascinating, and I've seen a lot of mixed opinions about whether or not they're beneficial to the arts community. I don't want to get too preachy either way, because there are both pros and cons, but I hope I can give you a good overview to help you make your own informed decision about what NFTs mean for you. NFT is short for non-fungible token and is a unique form of data associated with cryptocurrency. They first crept up on Ethereum blockchains in 2015 and have had quite the surge in popularity recently. The name refers to how they're not interchangeable and therefore they're not fungible. It is my new least favorite word. Anyway, Wikipedia has a pretty good base explanation of NFTs, which I will share with you now. A non-fungible token, or NFT, is a unit of data on a digital ledger called a blockchain, where each NFT can represent a unique digital item, and thus they are not interchangeable. NFTs can represent digital files such as art, audio, videos, items in video games, and other forms of creative work. While the digital files themselves are infinitely reproducible, the NFTs representing them are tracked on their underlying blockchains and provide buyers with proof of ownership. It's important to note a few things mentioned in this definition. 1. Access to copies of the original file an NFT is associated with isn't restricted to the person who owns the NFT, so other people may have a copy of the file without having to have the associated token. Number two, what makes an NFT non-fungible is that each one is associated with a unique file, and therefore, unlike the file it represents, is the only one in existence, and it can be resold by the buyer. It's more like a certificate of authenticity than an actual exchangeable currency like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or just real-world dollars. And three, NFTs work by being added to a blockchain. I will now run through what those are with you because, to be honest, I had no clue either before starting this video. As established, a blockchain is a type of digital ledger which records and can verify transactions between two parties, and, according to the Harvard Business Review, can also trigger transactions automatically, and Investopedia, <laughs> in, and inv and Investopedia explains the process like this. As new data comes in, it is entered into a fresh block. Once the block is filled with data, it is chained onto the previous block, which makes the data chained together in chronological order. As the data is chained back to back and is unchangeable once entered, you can probably see why it makes a good ledger. It forms a tight transaction record that, as far as I understand, cannot be tampered with. HBR's article The Truth About Blockchain is a little complex and lengthy, but it's a good explanation of how big companies already use blockchain if you're interested in that sort of thing. And now that we all have a basic understanding of NFTs and the blockchains they exist on, let's run through some examples. For one, an NFT of Nyan Cat was sold by the memes creator for 300 Ethereum, which was about $590,000 at the time in February. I'm pretty sure that's US dollars, but even if it isn't, that's still pretty gnarly. There was also a rare Pepe based on Homer Simpson that sold in March for 205 Ethereum, and 
There's also applications for NFTs in the fine art world, and I'll share one or two examples in the following sections of this video. As you've probably guessed from the examples I've given, the increase in NFT awareness has opened new avenues through which digital artists and other creators can earn an income from their work, and in some cases continue to earn from the same work over and over again through royalties and NFT-based subscription services. Let's take Beeple as a case study. He is a digital artist that's become pretty big lately because of his JPEG artwork that sold through Christie's for over 69 nice, million US dollars. Titled Every Days, The First 500 Days, it is a collage of individual images that, as the name suggests, were created each day for about 13 years. It has no physical equivalent and therefore is completely digital, and is the first of its kind to be sold through a major art auction house. And, according to Christie's, this sale has made Beeple one of the three most valuable living artists. He's right up in the big bourgeois category of artists including Jeff Koons, The Idea Thief, Mr. Bean, and um, I don't actually know anything about this guy, but him, he painted a pool, but I don't know what else he did. Anyway, the point is, there are now digital artists that are on the same playing field as major fine artists, with the potential to earn just as much money. It's even possible for the financial gain to be ongoing for the artist and all their agent through royalties. Beeple actually receives 10% each time the NFT changes hands. That is obviously a pretty outlandish example, but NFT art isn't exclusive to the big wigs. Plenty of smaller artists are getting in on the action, especially on Twitter, including a few people that I'd been following already. NFTs can also be used in combination with physical artworks, which is what Australian artist Kieran Seymour is doing with his paintings. And buying this stuff has a lot of appeal for a few reasons, chiefly the concept of authenticity and the possibility of future investment. If done right, attaching an NFT to your work when you sell it is a good way to trace ownership across several purchases. The blockchain will tell you who bought it, how much for, and who created the NFT in the first place. It's also a neat way of creating a sense of authenticity for the digital age. While duplicates will often be available to others, only you, the buyer, owns the authentic and original version. And the thing about NFTs being non-fungible is that they act like collectibles and other rare objects. Their value is higher than that of something more common, so holding on to them to sell later can be a good investment opportunity. However, when it's not done right, we get to... So it seems that while the hype lasts, minting NFTs will be one of the best means of earning income as someone in the creative industries, especially in the digital sector. However, that doesn't mean that there are no negative consequences. You see, if there are more ways in which digital goods like music, memes, and art can be traded, then there are more ways in which they can be stolen. And no, I don't mean stolen as in a museum heist. I mean stolen as in people claiming other artists' work as their own, in this case for profit. Hopefully I don't need to explain why claiming someone else's work as your own whether it be for clout or financial gain or whatever reason, is bad. Different artists will also have their own rules for what clients can and can't do with work they commissioned, which is hopefully an other no-brainer if you're in the art community. What I will explain, however, is the process of how NFTs can be minted through art theft. As many NFT artworks are available to download for free anyway, one process is clear. People may download an image or even commission an artwork, then put it up for sale as an NFT without consent from the original artist. A way in which this can be streamlined is through dedicated accounts on Twitter. 
For instance, the ABC has reported on an automated NFT tweet mining bot with the at tokenized tweets, saying, The bot creates NFTs of tweets without alerting the owner of the tweet. A Twitter user simply has to mention the bot below a tweet for that tweet to be made into an NFT. Weird Undead, a Russian artist, said she became suspicious of theft when she saw a user mention tokenized tweets beneath a tweet of hers that featured images promoting her, re her most recent artwork. Investigating further, she found her tweet, with the artwork embedded, up for auction on OpenSea, one of the largest NFT marketplaces. It got taken down when she alerted the platform, but still, the fact that it happened at all is ridiculous and disgusting. I've also seen mention of this account while just scrolling through Twitter on my own, and have been made aware of either it or a mirror threatening to use alternate accounts to tokenize tweets belonging to users that blocked them as some sort of petty revenge. And on top of that, legitimate NFTs minted by the artist or their agent still need to be discussed in terms of ownership and value. Like, what does the ownership itself amount to when the file the NFT represents can be downloaded by people other than the person who owns the NFT? And you'll probably remember that I started this chapter by saying, while the hype lasts. The thing about online trends is that they're trends. While NFTs are currently getting a lot of use and can garner the seller massive sums of money for their collectability, there is the very possible risk that people will lose interest and the NFT market will crash. In fact, in some ways, this is already happening. No! No! Okay, now we're diving into the deep end of the NFT debate pool. Now, this is more a criticism of blockchains than NFTs themselves, but since NFTs work because of blockchain, I have to bring this up. Blockchains can get big. Very big. Takes up a server room big. And according to Wikipedia, uh, NFTs usually run on a proof-of-work blockchain, which is much less energy efficient than a proof-of-stake blockchain. Now, this incurs a huge cost, both financially and environmentally. Money-wise, running blockchain networks is expensive, so a lot of NFT and crypto services require users to pay a fee for gas to cover their use of the blockchain. It's just as likely that you could lose money on your NFTs as earn money on them. And this power adds up, which is very detrimental for the environment if you're using non-renewable energy. For an example of proof-of-work blockchain power consumption, Investopedia <laughs> Investopedia claims that the power from the millions of computers on the Bitcoin network is close to what Denmark consumes annually. Like, an entire country. So, assuming electricity costs is 3 to 5 cents per kilowatt hour, an individual's Bitcoin mining costs come up to about 5 to 7 thousand dollars per coin. And, while solar power Bitcoin mining farms exist, that's not all of them, so there's still a lot of fossil fuels being used up by blockchains. May I remind you, Bitcoin alone consumes almost as much energy as all of Denmark. <laughs> so, imagine applying these levels to NFT trading and other cryptocurrencies. It's not very good. And that, in a nutshell, is the good, bad, and ugly of NFTs. Personally, I'm not a huge fan, and I think that at this point in time, where we're still using unsustainable energy sources and art theft for personal gain, is still both easy and commonplace, NFTs can be pretty damaging. But I also think that artists should, you know, be paid for their work, and this is good for that if managed by people who know what they're doing, and most commercial ventures have a risk associated with them. 
Like I said at the start, this isn't intended as an opinion piece, and I did try to present the points I made in a logical way that highlighted factual information, and I encourage you to look into this further. But yeah, inevitably I was going to have to take a side, and I figured I should share the side that I'm on after I shared the more unbiased stuff. And that's it. NFTs can be used as a means of selling stuff, profiting off other people's stuff, and they may or may not be killing the planet. They are. I don't know how long the trend will last, because at the moment they are just that, a trend, but it's impactful enough for myself and the art community to cover while still a hot topic. So yeah, <laughs> uh, like and subscribe, I guess. Uh, buy my merch here and follow my Twitch, but only if you want to. Uh, thank you so much for watching this all the way through and have an excellent day.